Good morning, everybody. Uh, I, would I would like to welcome each and every one of you who have made it this far today to our fifth UNESCO Most Winter School. Um, this is a, a very special event that we are having today uh, and in the next uh, five days. This is our fifth um, winter school in, in, in a row. And this is the first time, however, that we are doing it here in Vesprem. We usually uh, organize it in Köseg, where uh, our institute, the Institute of Advanced Studies Köseg, is um, located and has its headquarters. Uh, this year is a special year because Vesprem is European capital of culture, and uh, Euro the European capital of culture has sponsored this uh, event for us. So we are really very happy um, to be hosted in this beautiful city, and we are very happy to be hosting every one of you who, who have um, made it to this event. Let me um, extend a special warm welcome to uh, Mr. Dula Purga, the mayor of Vesprem. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Ms. Alice Markovic, the CEO of Web um, 2023. <laughs> and let me have a special warm welcome to Mr. Mladen Andrilic, uh, the Croatian ambassador to Hungary. Welcome. <laughs> Mr. Andrilic has been a recurrent visitor at our events, and we always like to have you back with us. Thank you. We are super and extremely happy that we've had so many applications for this event. And we have about 100 participants from around 50 countries here. We have speakers from about 40 speakers from about 16 countries. So this is a truly international event. This is an event that we've been sort of um, wanting and we've been craving for to be organizing. So um, we are extremely happy to have you. Let me um, now give the floor to our first welcome uh, speech. And uh, it's going to be held by Professor Miklos Réthelyi. Uh, he's the chair for the Hungarian, uh, the National uh, uh, Commission for UNESCO. And he's a pro professor emeritus at Semmelweis Medical University. And um, let me give the floor to you. Mr. Galantier, Mayor of uh, Vesprim, the ladies and gentlemen, before I start my welcome speech, I would like to call your attention to a recent press release saying that the World Heritage Committee of UNESCO decided to inscribe the historic center of Odessa, Ukraine, on the World Heritage List. And I quote from here, Odessa, a free city, a world city, a legendary port that has left its mark on cinema, literature, and the arts, Odessa is thus placed under the reinforced protection of the international community. While the war continues, this inscription embodies our collective determination to ensure that this city, which has always surmounted global upheavals, is preserved from further destruction, unquote, announced Audrey Azule, UNESCO Director General. The historic center of Odessa was placed immediately as world heritage in danger. Dear ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure to welcome you on the first day of the fifth most conference <clears throat> 2023 entitled Resilience in the Age of Uncertainty. It's also a great pleasure for me to do this in this beautiful historic town, West Brim, in the cultural capital of Europe in 2023. The title of a conference explains and emphasizes its substance and objectives. I'm asking myself whether the emphasis on, emphasis on the word resilience expresses the most important virtue 
to react on the events of the age of uncertainty. The word resilience has several synonyms, like flexibility, elasticity, endurance, toughness, or bounce, bouncing back. These words mean that after the cessation of, the, of some force, objects or living creatures are able to return to the original condition. To cope with the problems of an uncertain world, we need more not to return to the point of origin, but to step forward. The term age of uncertainty was coined by John Kenneth Galbraith for a TV series in 1973 at the request of a BBC reporter. This year, we may remember the author, John Kenneth Galbraith, at the 50th anniversary of the notion age of uncertainty. 40 years after its birth, in the autumn of 2013, Ferenc Mislivets, the chairman of the one-time Social Sciences Committee of the Hungarian National Committee of UNESCO, organized a conference in Budapest entitled Landscape of Crisis, a New Age of Uncertainty. I was invited to welcome uh, the conference <clears throat> as the president of the Hungarian National Committee of UNESCO as the present position. In my talk, I compared security and uncertainty. It was stated that we needed a strategy to live in the future that mixes security and uncertainty. The strategy must be based on education, knowledge, culture, and information, which is which are the four pillars of UNESCO. After the leading roles of education and knowledge, it was emphasized that culture that includes both education and knowledge helps us not to feel alone in a world of transform full of transformations, therefore unrecognizable and constantly changing. At the end of the talk, it was asked whether for people of adequate competencies and trust, a predictable, always certain world would be the proper age for living. To be sure, <clears throat> every person's life is finite. One day we will die. But until that moment, let's uh, consider the events of the uncertain world as the never fading source or sources for correction in our life. To be ready to, the, to do the corrections, resilience could be replaced perhaps by adaptability. The subtitle of the conference, Building Peace Through Culture and Education, cuts into the focus of the today's social and political situation. The creation of UNESCO in 1946, following the horrible destructions of the Second World War, was aimed to establish and strengthen peace in the world. The first sentence of the UNESCO's charter reads, since wars <coughs> arise in the consciousness of the people, it is necessary to work on the consciousness of the people to defend peace. To defend peace, the world needs peace peacemakers. Pope Francis put the question of, this, of his reflection on November 1st 2022, how can one be a peacemaker? We all crave for peace, but often it means to live in calm conditions, in quietness, left undisturbed by others, in peace. In contrast, there are people who not only want to live in peace, but who are ready to build peace. They are the peace-building uh, agents. At the foundation of peace, one finds commitment, cooperation, and patience. Peace will not to fall into our laps from above. Peace sprouts from the soil of life, in friendship, in the family, at the workplace, in a subway wagon full of passengers, and in the soil of this conference, too. 
Its growth is aided by acts of justice and mercy. Peace cannot be achieved by conquests, by defeating people or nations. Pope Francis also gives some advice on how to become peacemakers. First of all, it is necessary to disarm our hearts, remove from all aggressive thoughts, complaints, indifferences turned against each other. Peace building paves the way to peace. We forgive those who have offended or hurt us. We care about those on the margins of society. And we try to remedy injustice for those <coughs> who have less. Of course, what people, <coughs> Pope Francis teaches is based on the thoughts of the Bible, in which we also find this phrase, glory in heaven to God and peace on earth to men of goodwill. Among peacemakers, we will surely find those who recognize a causal relationship between the two halves of this teaching. The peace on earth has prerequisite. Man alone is not enough for peace building. Returning to what is enshrined in the UNESCO's charter, a quote again, a peace that is based solely on the political and economic agreements of governments cannot bring about the unanimous, lasting, and sincere cooperation of peoples of the world. So peace based on lasting foundations must be based on the spiritual and moral compassion of humanity, unquote. I hope you have noticed the cross talk between the teaching of Pope Francis and the aims of the founding fathers of UNESCO. This conference has a subtitle that plans to build peace in the realms of education and culture. I am convinced that spiritual and moral solidarity emerges from these two. Thank you very much for your attention. This winter school wouldn't be a winter school without the University of Pannonia. The University of Pannonia, who has several students representing it today with us, has been our partner for, for many years. And we have uh, the rector of this prestigious university with us today, Mr. Uh, Professor Andras Gelencir, and I would like to now give him the floor to welcome you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure for me to welcome you in West Prim for the first time at this uh, prestigious uh, conference series, which uh, is organized jointly by the University of Pannonia and the uh, IASC. And uh, this is a special year for the University of Pannonia and also for the city of West Prim, since we host uh, the European Capital of Culture this year, which, uh, which gives us special opportunity and also responsibility for solving uh, very uh, grave issues, such as uh, the title of this conference. And we are all aware that we live in an age of uncertainty. And uh, we, we can agree that, that this uh, century, this uh, 21st century, is not a success story so far. Since it started with, uh, with, uh, with the iconic uh, event of uh, the demolition of the, of the, twin, uh, of the towers, the World, World Trade Center, which uh, set uh, the floor for uh, the upcoming events uh, of this century. And uh, besides, we are all aware by now that, uh, that uh, the things are not going to the right direction especially if we uh, think about uh, sustainability. Uh, the world has coined uh, the term uh, sustainable development, which is uh, an oxymoron, since, uh, as we understand, uh, development is the growth of GDP, which requires energy, which requires material, 
and uh, uh, the resources of the Earth uh, are limited. So uh, in this respect, we are, we are not uh, aware of this, uh, we have not been aware of these limitations so far. But uh, regarding the events of the last couple of years, we are uh, getting uh, increasingly aware of, of those limitations. And the other issue that uh, I would like uh, to point out is that uh, uh, this uh, century uh, hallmarks uh, uh, the uh, spread of uh, the internet and uh, the virtual reality. And this virtual reality is, uh, is used for different purposes. And uh, it, uh, for example, it uh, increases the amount of information uh, to uh, Unimaginable uh, excess, but uh, but uh, at the same time it uh, discredited science. So as we feel that uh, now people are much less uh, uh, aware of the of the real world than uh, they were in the past. For example, uh, the proportion of uh, those people who believe in uh, in that the Earth is flat increase from 0% to 8% within a, a course of uh, 20 years. And it is, it is, this is due to the presence of internet and the information spreading through the internet. And politicians are also making use of the internet by creating alternative reality. But the problem is that we live in a real world, and uh, especially in terms of uh, the Earth's uh, resources, including uh, ecosystems and, and mineral resources, are real. So we cannot uh, surpass uh, these uh, limitations uh, in, in uh, virtual reality. We are anchored to, to a real world. And, we, and it seems that uh, uh, now uh, the, the world or the Earth warns us that uh, we are part of, uh, of, uh, of the planet and we have limitations despite all of endeavors in the virtual world. And, uh, it took about two decades for the humanity to understand that we are living in, uh, in, uh, in, a, in the age of uncertainty. And so we heard that the, this uh, term um, was coined in, uh, in the 70s, but it took a couple of, uh, a half, half of century uh, for the people to, to realize that we, we, we uh, really are uh, living there. And, uh, and uh, I think that we are, we are facing uh, hard times in, in the coming decades. So we, we need to be very uh, united. We need to be very aware. We need to somehow reestablish the uh, credibility of science. And also, uh, to, we, we have to make peace uh, because we are, we are relying on one another. So uh, globalization uh, has reached a, a point from which there is no way back. So uh, we cannot uh, establish uh, uh, closed uh, systems which uh, can uh, live on their own. We are relying on each other's knowledge, resources, and also uh, this is our task to reestablish uh, uh, the way uh, that humanity can survive uh, these, uh, these uh, decades. And there is a, another word which I would like to call uh, uh, your attention on is the word polycrisis, poly which is a new term and uh, it may, may be uh, the, term, the term of the of, uh, of year or, or uh, of the coming uh, decade, which means that there is not a single crisis that we are facing, but also uh, quite a number of issues which are strongly related and interrelated and there is no single uh, solution to, to those uh, crises. So we need to be very uh, determined and very, uh, very conscious to, to solve uh, the problems that are ahead of us. And I think that uh, such events, uh, like this uh, winter school from, I heard, uh, 50 participants from 50 countries, and also uh, speakers from, um, some 20 countries are the way uh, forward, I mean, to establish the, uh, the possible solutions for these uh, multi-crises or polycrises that, that we are facing. And we need to join our forces 
I mean, educated people uh, need to join their forces to to overcome uh, the difficulties that we we uh, experience today and we will experience in the future. It's a it, there will be hard times, and we need to be very uh, conscious and aware uh, to to uh, to be successful. So I hope that uh, these uh, these uh, series of uh, presentations and the discussions will uh, bring up uh, pot potential solutions, will help identify uh, the major elements and uh, of the crisis, different uh, crises, and also the interrelations between them, because they are very highly uh, correlating, correlated and, and related. And uh, we, might, we might jointly find some uh, solutions to, to our problems, which uh, are plenty. So I hope uh, that uh, this will be a very successful and memorable conference in this wonderful city. And remember that this is a special year for Westprim, and you are part of the story of, uh, of this uh, European capital of culture, which extends beyond Europe, because we are di uh, discussing problems of humanity and not only Europe. Uh, so I hope that you will enjoy your stay in Westprim, and you will have memorable uh, experience from uh, from this uh, school and uh, we will jointly uh, solve some of the problems of uh, humanity thank you yes i ho i hope so too <laughs> unesco unesco most schools are especially designed to not just be conferences, but to be workshops where, where participants and speakers, they engage in a dialogue and they, they actually discuss these issues uh, on a in a horizontal manner with each other. So in every session, we will try to m make time for, for, a, for a horizontal discussion between speakers and participants and never, never uh, feel ashamed or afraid of asking questions, of making comments. You are very welcome to speak up at any moment. Okay, and um, we have uh, another very highly uh, respected person that would like to greet you today. Uh, he's uh, Mr. Ernesto Otone Ramirez, and he's Assistant uh, Director General for, Cu for Culture at UNESCO in Paris. Since he has not been able to come uh, physically uh, today, he has sent a video message that I would like to invite you to watch with, with us. It is my great pleasure to join you for the fifth UNESCO Most Winter School. Here in Veszprém, a UNESCO creative city of music, which has also been named a European capital of culture. During this edition of the UNESCO Most Winter School, you will focus on a wide range of issues impacting culture today, from conflicts and emergencies to climate change and digital transformation. UNESCO was founded on the belief that protecting and promoting culture is essential to the achieving of peace and mutual understanding. In the wake of conflicts and emergencies, reviving cultural heritage and cultural life is essential to the rebuilding of communities, to promoting reconciliations and to creating a sense of hope for the future. For decades, UNESCO has supported the reconstruction and recovery of culture in the wake of conflicts and emergencies from Bosnia and Herzegovina to Tumbuktu, Iraq, Beirut, Afghanistan and Ukraine. In the wake of the devastating earthquakes in Turkey and Syria, we are working with our partners and national authorities to undertake an initial survey of damages to heritage. Climate change represents another important challenge, as we have seen with the recent floods, floods in Pakistan, where UNESCO has mobilized support for the protection of cultural heritage in the affected regions. UNESCO recently published a major study on World Heritage glaciers, one third of which are set to disappear by 2050 as a result of climate change. 
The culture sector was among the hardest hit by the COVID-19 pandemic, which also contributed to the rapid digitalization of the sector, which poses real risks to culture diversity. This past September, UNESCO held the UNESCO World Conference on Cultural Policies and Sustainable Development, Mondiacult 2022. The historic conference resulted in a declaration adopted by 150 countries that recognizes culture as a global public good. The declaration also highlighted the power of culture to renew and broaden bilateral and multilateral cooperation, promote multilingualism and a culture of peace, and enable dialogue and solidarity within and between countries, including through cultural diplomacy. UNESCO has worked to strengthen the role of culture as a driver of diplomacy and international cooperation by supporting the integration of culture in the G20 and by organizing the first global meetings of ministers of culture in decades. One of the key ways that UNESCO works to promote international cooperation and dialogue is through the implementation of its cultural conventions and other standing, uh, standard standing instruments, including the 2003 Convention for the Safeguarding of the Intangible Cultural Heritage, which celebrates this year its 20th anniversary. These conventions unite countries around common norms and commitments to protect and promote the diversity of cultural expression, uphold the social and economic rights of artists, safeguarding living heritage, fight the illicit trafficking of cultural property, and protect cultural property in the event of armed conflicts, among others. As current and future leaders in the field of culture, your idea, vision, and voices will be essential to putting these norms into practice and to meeting the challenges facing culture today. I have no doubt that you are up to the task. Thank you and thank you to the organizer of this UNESCO Most Winter School. Thank you very much, and Ernesto. Now for the next uh, speaker, I would like to introduce Professor Shen Shengmeng, who is Vice Rector of Yuan University uh, EHS campus in Bonn. Uh, she has not been able to join us today, um, but she also sent a video message to welcome you. Let's hear her now. Hello everyone, my name is Xiao Meng Shen. I'm the Vice Rector of United Nations University and the Director of UN University Institutes for Environment and Human Security. First and foremost, I wish to congratulate the organizers for the launch of the fifth UNESCO Most Winter School, held this year in Veszprem, a beautiful UNESCO city of music and one of European capitals of culture in 2023. I have the privilege of also holding the role of UNESCO Learning Cities Ambassador for the city of Bonn in Germany. Hence, I very much appreciate and recognize the value and importance of celebrating and cherishing international cultural heritage and the crucial role and power of education and knowledge in tackling some of the greatest challenges of our time. Indeed, you will all agree with me that we have been facing the most difficult times of humanity. Many people are on their moves because they have lost their homes. They have been facing the threat of terrorism, the COVID-19 pandemic, and the humanitarian crisis on our Eastern Front just to name a few. The series of incidents we face in the past decades has taught us how lack of knowledge, understanding, and interest in the lives of others could turn tensions into catastrophes, how they could drive further tensions in this interconnected world. If it is us humans who created catastrophes, we should also be in the position to reverse the tide and build our societies back better. We can never emphasize enough the role of shared culture and education, as well as collaborative action 
in enhancing the resilience of people in times of uncertainty and in uniting us to work together for a better future. The challenge is formidable, but there are opportunities that go hand in hand with any challenge. Digital technologies present such opportunities. However, it is important to use the chance of digital transformation, social media, and artificial intelligence deliberately for human well-being and to mitigate disaster risks. We can be the initiators of change, drawing on knowledge, culture, and collaboration. This UNESCO Most Winter School is instrumental to foster wisdom in all of these areas. In my role as Vice Rector at the UN University, I'm very excited to see curious participants and students to come together and co-create a joint vision and give humanity hope. I wish you all a fruitful event and thank you very much. Professor Xiaomang is also a recurrent um, invited speaker at uh, IASC events, and she will be returning to us physically in September when we have the uh, upcoming uh, Craft Creative Cities um, uh, and um, uh, Sustainable Regions Conference. So we, we will be very happy to invite you back to that one as well. Um, since uh, the cooperation between UN University, IASC, and University of Pannonia is developing quite fast, we will see much more of these um, uh, events in the future, and perhaps also more programs, study programs and degree programs in the future. So as our last, uh, but not least, uh, we, I would like to invite the Director General of IASC to welcome you at this event. Um, he is Professor Ferenc Mislivets. He's, he is the founder and director of IASC, and he has done an immense work in uh, the city of Kuseg, as well as in Western Pannonia for de developing the region, as well as to develop um, institutions of higher education. So please welcome Ferenc Mislivets. Thank you very much. Um, very welcome, all of you. Um, forgive me, I'm not going to give everyone's names because we are going to start the panel together very soon. But I'm glad that, um, that um, you all together, with, uh, together with our, our colleagues and friends who are online, um, are representing, I would say, the entire world. That that's um, UNESCO's aim. So it's not um, a little Hungarian or Central European or, or European um, discussion. Um, many times we, we are falling to this trap, I guess, here in that part of the world that we think what, what is happening to us is the most important thing for everyone. Um, and this, this even concerns this big, the big challenge, what, what we are discussing today, the war. Uh, for, for many of us, living in Eastern Central Europe or even Europe or around Russia. This is a, quite a big challenge. But I'm not sure that everyone, and you, you are going to tell us, uh, everyone in the world, in, in Africa, in Latin America, uh, in certain parts of Asia, this is, a, this is the most important concern uh, of, of your everyday um, uh, existence. We should talk about it. Um, but what I'm very, um, very glad, very pleased, that um, so many of you took this, this invitation seriously, and you came here in person. We had um, three very difficult years behind us. Um, the pandemia did not let us continue our series of, of gatherings, as we did in Kursag mostly, and Budapest sometimes, uh, which is very important to meet each other, to look into each other's eyes, and to discuss things. Yeah, we discuss things which are not so obvious. And this is one of my, 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 my message, if you want, here, that we are going to talk about um, very challenging things. Um, violence, blood, um, annihilation of human lives, um, and, and that's, and that's uh, the consequences of all these. But before starting to judge emotionally, ideologically, or, or, or politically, we should 
try, and this is the task of, of scientists, researchers, and educators, and politicians, to dig deeper, to try to understand um, the reasons, the causes of the situation. If we, really, if we are really serious to create peace, that should not be a piece of what um, <clears throat> once um, a British historian um, called the peace of the zoo, E.P. Thompson, that, that when we are all living in our cage and we are not able to move, so we can't, we, we can't create a new war. It has to be a very different kind of setup, though, whose contour we cannot see yet. Because that needs, um, that needs um, uh, contemplation, deliberation, debate, discussions, um, maybe conflicts, understanding, trying to understand very different kinds of views, like about sanctions, a tremendous different, of, uh, different interpretations in the world. Yeah. Um, and these this, this debates are missed. Um, and then um, Professor Rete mentioned, <laughs> that was 10 years ago, we started to talk about the interwoven, uh, multi-headed crisis and uncert uncertainty. Yes, it was um, John Kenneth Gerbrace who coined this idea in the TV series in BBC in the 70s about the age of uncertainty. And you can say that all ages are the ages of uncertainty. But what we suggested with Professor Honkish, who coined this, this, this phrase, is a new age of uncertainty. And then comes, what kind of new age is this? Of paradoxes, of lack, lack of any certainty, the end of certainty, that, that our, our concepts became paradoxical. Yeah? It's, it's like in an Orwellian way, almost. When we say democracy, most of the time is lack of democracy. It's always like that. A, a, a notion contains the, its opposition. But if, if more than 40 or 50 percent of a notion is, is the opposite, and it's very difficult to use, to describe, to understand, or to analyze complex phenomena. So here we have a, a, huge, a huge task um, ahead, and, and that, that we need um, patience, we need to listen to each other, and we have to do it in a continuous way. It's not that we have five wonderful days in this beautiful city, Vesprim, who is hosting us, which I, I, for which I congratulate. To, um, to, to Mr. Mayor and, and all, all of, of, of your colleagues, um, Alice, who's also our colleague, and our institute, who is a strategic partner. It's a beautiful thing, one of the great ideas of the European Union, um, to choose one or two um, capitals for, for the European culture each year. That gives a chance for, for those who are engaged in, in music, in arts, in, in, in social dialogue, in, in any kind of culture to gather and, and to exchange their products, their productions, etc. But but imagine that we are doing this now and here, when the the uncertainty and the unpredictability of war is 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 just chasing us. And that kind of paradox, we, that kind of contradiction, we need to interpret. And and uh, we, yeah, we talked about several of you mentioned the multi-layered nature of culture, yeah? the multicultural um, uh, uh, character of our world. Um, there is no um, national, 100% clean culture or cultural heritage. So what's happening to our culture in this age, the last 20, 25 years, when nations and nation states are more inward looking and, and, and ethnic nationalism is on the rise and, and, and people, our neighbors, believe that um, they not only have to fight the Russian tanks, which they have to, and we have to <laughs> help them as much as possible, but also annihilate Russian culture from their everyday life. This is, again, something we have to Pushkin. Statue of Pushkin was moved from, from the main square of Kiev. Tchaikovsky was banned in some of Europeans' um, concert halls. So that is something we have to discuss um, very clearly. Um, and uh, very honestly, and the, to, to, in order to try to imagine a new peace order, which n might not be very easy to build, we need that kind of horizontal and very difficult um, dialogues to start. Otherwise, I think we might have a ceasefire, 
but we might end up in, 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 um, in a piece of, of the zoo, which we, we should, we should um, avoid um, with any, any, any means and efforts. So again, but here and now, um, I'm happy to announce that we are going to talk about other things um, than war, um, about, um, about the transcultural identities, about memory and the importance of remembrance, about the new technologies which help us um, <clears throat> uh, to understand in a deeper way reality, but it also carrying the danger of, of misleading uh, ourselves and each other. So it's, it's going to be a very complex um, series of discussions. And I'm, I'm very glad to announce that we want to continue this. It's not going to be only these five days. We are going to go on. And we have smaller and bigger seminars with the help of, of the technology, hopefully, um, in a hybrid form. And the next bigger meeting is um, in Kursag at the June, the 28th um, International Summer University, which we started when we had, we had very optimistic views about the European integration. Um, and we, are not, we were not yet members of the European Union in 96, uh, when we had um, optimism, cheer, visitors from all over of the Europe. Today, we were happy to, 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 to receive a few, very, very few um, um, core EU member state um, visitors. In the last 10 years, there's no dialogue. There's no interest. It's a mutual problem. Um, among the lecturers, yes, we have from the EU um, countries quite a few lecturers. But uh, those who want to listen, uh, who are the particip participants, are more from the wider world. And that, that's, again, a phenomenon we should think about, yeah? Even with Hungarian participants, I was happy the last year when it turned out that we do have, like, minimum from five or six Hungarian universities. Uh, that wasn't the case. So that is the danger that people are, um, how to say it, trying to escape um, this, this frightening reality. And I think uh, Professor <coughs> Rita is absolutely right. Resilience and sustainability are becoming very empty. Um, uh, slogans. We have to be very careful by using them. Resilience could also mean that the government is suggesting people, okay, be tougher, be more clever. There's a more problem that you should learn how to readjust. No, resilience is not going to be possible without cooperation between different sectors, namely the governance, the government, uh, civil society, and, 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 and the business world. And this is not yet happening. Yeah? So, what's it? so be, be resilient. It's so nice to be resilient. You, you know, you get a big punch and you jump up and, and you, do, you, you, you do your stuff further. Yeah? Don't worry. Be resilient. Or be, yeah, let's have a sustainable what. Um, so we, we have to start to rethink uh, our concepts. We have put more content into these concepts or create new ones in order to get closer to this very complex and very rapidly changing reality in order to find possible solutions. But that is, again, not possible if you are doing it in closed circles, uh, either be them uh, professional cir circles or national circles or, or artistic circles. They need to open up. And this is a good example for it. So thank you for coming. I wish you a very good discussion. Um, inside and outside of the seminar room. Thank you for the organizers for this wonderful place. That is, I'm very, I'm really honored to be here in this Hong Villa, which is a good example of civil society initiative that was in, initiated by West Brim uh, Civil Society. This is not a government um, um, building. Um, and and let, yes, and look for, for the positive examples, the positive messages that will fill us up and we have to go to discuss the tough things. Well, thank you very much and have a nice time in the spring. Yes, and before we break up for lunch, because you see, we just, we hardly started, we are already inviting you for lunch. <laughs> but before we do that, let me invite you to also uh, when you go outside of this room, try go and use the city and go on discussing. There's a lot of uh, interesting places here that you can visit. 
um, pubs and restaurants to sit and, dis and continue dis discussing whatever it is that occupies your minds. So please use the city here. And as far as today, we will meet back here at 1 o'clock, and the session will be entitled Imagining Post-War Futures, Dimensions of Security, and the Culture of Peace. Have a nice lunch.